good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, you know, it's Jose here, welcoming you to another reading guide, another intro. So today I am going to be giving you a bit of a uh, introduction, a bit of a reading guide to the Eldrick Saga by British author Michael Moorcock. Now, a bit of a warning, the whole Eldrick thing is a mess. It's a total mess and this is not meant to be a comprehensive uh, reading guide. But this is just like the, the basics, the fundamentals, the what you need to really get a deep flavor for the Eldrick Saga. And what I've done is actually compare the original Door editions of the 70s with the latest uh, available uh, compilations by Golangs. And I am going to do so with the help of some pretty cheesy slides that I've put together just to help along and try to um, illuminate what I'm trying to say. Now remember, Morco wrote the series without any sense of internal chronology. He just wrote the stories as and when he felt like moving around the timeline of the internal uh, chronology of the series. And apart from the novellas, there were short stories published in magazines, uh, of which Michael Morco was an editor back in the swing in London of the 60s, and I suspect, my theory, no accusations, no judgment passed, the guy was in... he must have been on the psychedelics to, to write the kind of stuff that he wrote, right? I mean, we're talking multiverses, eternal champions, all that kind of stuff, and looking at the timeline of when he wrote and uh, when it happened, and how, you know, I think he must have tried some of that stuff. But anyway, Cool if he did, cool if he didn't, don't really care. Now, the door books of the 70s, as opposed to the recent Golangs ones, they got a plus for me, and it's the really cool covers uh, that they had. So I'm going to do a bit of research and put down below the name of the artist that drew those covers. Uh, initially, the more recent Golangs ones are a bit more generic and a bit more devoid of soul, and I think you get less of a sense for the for the series and, and I really like the imagery that the original door books um, came up with. Now the thing is that the 70s editions are out of print, they're gonna be harder to come by, you're going to have to do a bit more digging around, secondhand internet trolling type thing, whereas the Golang's books uh, are much more available and particularly for me uh, they are available very quickly, very easy on the Kindle, so that, that's that's where I'm going with. Also, you have to bear in mind that the Door books um, were published before Morcock finished the whole series, the saga, so it is a bit incomplete. Um, and uh, let me let me talk you through it. Both, whether you go down the Door or the Golang's books. Both of them start with Elric of Melnivone. That's effectively uh, the first book you should read in the series. It wasn't the first one uh, written, but you get a one for one. It's a like for like. Dor or Golangs, that's where you want to start. Book two in the series is The Fortress of the Peril. And because that got published in 1989, it's not uh, available in the Dor books. That's where you've got a bit of a gap there. And the second book in this series is The Fortress of the Peril. Now, book three that you should read, both editions, is The Sailor of the Seas of Fate. But what you've got to bear in mind is that in the Golang's edition, uh, the fourth book, which is The Weird of the White Wolf, is included in The Sailor of the Seas of Fate. So, kind of if you want, uh, the third book in the Golang's series includes books three and four, which is why I left that gap there. So one, two, three, four, The Wood of the White Wolf. Now, book five has got a different title, but it's the same story. So The Vanishing Tower and The Sleeping Sorcerers are both the same thing, basically. That, that's, that's the next one down on your list. Uh, and then, next book, on the Golang's uh, list is The Revenge of the Rose, which was a shorter story. It is not included in the Door books, so you get a slightly more complete 
saga, if you want, in the Golang's books, and the Revenge of the Rose includes the Bane of the Black Sword, which will be the next book you read in the Dole books. Um, and finally, both of them finish at the same place with Stormbringer. Um, so, like I said, Dole books, way cooler covers. Um, if you want to sort of troll the internet for them and, you know, have that sort of slightly more emotive, uh, slightly more nostalgic uh, books in your collection, certainly go for those. With Golangs, you're going to do Elric of Melnivone, book one, Fortress of the Peril, book two, Sailor of the Seas of Fate, which is book three, which includes book four, which is the Widow of the White Wolf, then the Sleeping Sorceress, which is the same as the Vanishing Tower, that would be your book four slash five, Revenge of the Rose, and then Stopbringer, and that's what I'm doing. And anyway, this is a short video. I really wanted to, to do this one. I know there are other reading guides out there, so shout out to the Nihilist Geek, because he did his own. Um, but I wanted to put my spin on this, compare the two editions, and, and give people a bit of guidance, because it's not a one-for-one -one match, and you can get a little bit lost. And also, if you were looking at the door books and trying to find the weed of the white wolf in Golangs and ask why is it not there, well, it is there, it's just hidden in another one of the books. Anyway, this is all I have for today. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you find it helpful. Please, as usual, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Take loads and loads of care. And I'll see you next time. Bye.